So today we are going to explore yet another UI, but this time it is not going to be a web-based UI. It is not going to run in browser. It is a UI running in your terminal session, right? And that for a freak like me, for terminals, that sounds awesome. So we are going to see what K9S is, what it's good for, what it's not good for, and so on and so forth. But unlike previous videos where I encourage you to see the video, to subscribe and what's or not, I'm going to try to discourage you from using um, K9S. And I'm going to do that through a simple question. Do you use Vim? And if you do, do you like it or you don't? So there are three possible answers to those questions. No, I do not use Vim. And if that's your answer, stop this video, go and explore documentation of Vim and come back here after a bit of practice and answer the question again. So we are, if you came back or you already used it before, we are narrowing the question to two possible answers. Do you like Vim or do you not like Vim? If you do not like Vim, do not proceed further. You will not like K9S. It reminds me so much on, of Vim that uh, I would say, I would describe it as Vim for Kubernetes cluster. Now, if you do like Vim, watch, watch this. You are likely going to like uh, K9S as well. You're very, very likely going to like it. So, my name is uh, Victor, uh, Victor Farsik, and this is DevOps Toolkit series channel. This, that's what you're watching. That's the place where I publish every week a video about the tool, about the process, about some pattern that are hopefully helpful for you and your career. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It's very important to subscribe so that you get notifications when I publish new videos. And if you would like to support this channel, please, please consider getting one of the books or courses that uh, I published uh, together with Darren Pope, my colleague. Currently, we're working on the DevOps Toolkit uh, Catalog Patterns and Blueprints. It is an ongoing project. We don't know when we're going to end. Uh, if you get it now, you will get updates. But the point of the whole project, the course and the book, is to explore as many good tools as we think are useful today. So check it out. Now, we are going to talk today about uh, K9S. K9S. It's one number higher than K8S, right? And uh, we're going to see what it's good for, what it's not good for, and so on and so forth. So hang on and let's see what it is. Let's explore it. Let's fire up K9S and see what we're going to get. This is the UI. This is how it looks like. And there's not much at the very beginning. But let's see what we're getting. And you will notice the vibe of Vim that everything is, uh, most of the commands are shortcuts, right? Or uh, commands entered through colon. You're going to see that soon. So let's see, help, right? What do we get? And here are the commands like uh, zero will give us all resources uh, in all namespaces. One will give us resources in the default namespace that will change over time. It will learn what we like, what we don't. Attach, copy, delete, describe, and so on and so forth. So those are some of the shortcuts, not all, of the tool itself. So for example, if we press Control A, uh, we can see the list of all uh, the resources that are supported in our cluster right now. Uh, aliases, API services, applications, and so on and so forth. So let's say, since I'm running here a cluster with uh, uh, Argo CD, and Argo CD creates custom resource called applications, let's see what we're going to get if I see that one there. Uh, there's not much. But let's go to all the namespaces because there isn't any Argo CD application in the default namespace. So all namespaces shows me 
the custom resource definitions in this case associated with Argo CD. Um, all three are in the Argo CD namespace. We have DevOps Paradox application, DevOps Toolkit, and production. Now, if you would like to see all the pods, for example, we can type pod. And uh, let me do that again. So I typed colon to get into the command uh, field. And then I type pod. I can press the right uh, arrow key to terminate that. And then we see all the pods running in all the namespaces because I typed zero before. So we have some pods in the Argo CD namespace, some in Cube system, and so on and so forth. So let's say that we are interested in seeing all the pods in a specific namespace. Let's say in production. I would type colon and then pod space production. And here are the pods in production. Now, a good thing, one of the things I like the most about K9S is that it is not just outputting in a similar way as we would output with kubectl, but it is watching for changes in the cluster. Uh, dash dash watch command or argument in, arg in kubectl is just horrible, right? This is watching for changes. Uh, we will see that a bit later. So let's say that we want to search for something. Imagine that this is much larger output and I would like to search for all the pods that contain the word toolkit. I can do that with slash. Same like in Vim or VI, VI or Vim. Uh, so slash and then we type what we want to search toolkit. And you can see that my output now was filtered. Now it shows only one pod before there were, there were two because only one matches that search term. I can do D to describe a resource that is currently highlighted. Oh, sorry. Uh, I need to select it first with enter and then D, and then I see the description, right? This is equivalent to uh, get pod and then uh, certain output. I think in this case it's YAML output, right? No, uh, this is equivalent actually to kubectl describe command. Uh, if I want to go back where I was before, I can press the escape key. Uh, I can see YAML definition of that resource by pressing Y, Y key. And then I get YAML instead of description, instead of equivalent of kubectl describe, I get equivalent of kubectl get and then etc. etc. Uh, dash dash uh, output uh, YAML. Uh, let's go back to where I was. Let's go back one more time. And for example, if I select DevOps Paradox, uh, I can see the pod of that, uh, actually I can see the containers inside of that pod. I can say L, for example, to see the logs. L is logs. Uh, there's not much going on, but anyway, you see some logs here uh, going on. Let's say escape again. Imagine that I want to change the cluster I am uh, using right now. Uh, I can do colon ctx and then I get the list of clusters. In this case, I'm not running any real cluster. This is a mi uh, Docker desktop and Minikube. I'm going to select Minikube again. What else, for example? What else could be useful? Uh, we might want to output uh, namespaces, colon ns. Then we get the list of all the namespaces. We can select all plus, which would give us the resources in all the namespaces or a specific namespace. Uh, or for example, control V, which changes uh, the, the output columns. Now I have very low resolution here, so if you see it well, so you don't see actually all the columns, but you need to imagine that with control V, we can ch change the view of what we are seeing right now. Or even better, let me go to all namespaces. And then I see all the pods and I can change the, the view of by pressing Control V, I think. Oh, now it doesn't work. Doesn't matter. Uh, what else? Uh, what else can we do? That's it. A lot of short uh, shortcuts, a lot of commands. And they are very, very similar to Vim, right? The logic is the same. Either Control something or any other combination for shortcuts. Um, if we want to type a command, like for example, to output, output pods, we need to press colon, just like in Vim, and then type the command, like pods, right? Or deployments or 
NS or namespaces and so on and so forth. Now, if I go out of this, uh, uh, if I want to go out of that application, if you're used to Vim, you will know what, what to do. That's colon Q or colon quit. Now, there are a few files that uh, you might be aware of. Like if we do cut home uh, and then k9s and then uh, config, this is the configuration file where you can fine tune uh, what should be, uh, what is the configuration of k9s. I'm not going to do that now, not enough time. Uh, you can see the hotkeys by going hotkey.yaml or yml actually. Uh, there is no hotkey in this case because I did not define hotkeys, but you could create additional shortcuts by modifying this file. You could create additional commands or aliases uh, by uh, modifying alias.yaml, which I haven't done yet. Or you can install additional plugins. So uh, let me actually get, uh, actually, let me show you. Yeah, why not? I think that I have a plugin in this setup. Uh, so if we output, uh, where is it, plugins, or plugin YAML, uh, you can see that I installed a plugin with the description get all, um, the description get all, and uh, shortcut, that's the most important part, shortcut is G, G. So whenever I want to invoke this plugin, I can just press G. And what plugin will do is that it will execute kubectl get all command. Now, if you're wondering where does this command come from, this is actually a command provided, provided through kettle. It's one of the plugins for uh, kubectl uh, that extends kubectl functionality. Doesn't matter what kettle is for now, but the point is that I can add additional plugins uh, to k9s. And if I start k9s again, uh, and if I press the G, this is my own custom plugin, you can see the plugin in action, right? I'm outputting now all the pods uh, in all the namespaces and watching them and what's not, right? Not that important. Uh, and I can go out with uh, colon G, uh, colon Q actually. Um, and that's about it. There's a lot more you can explore. And I must be honest with you, it has a steep learning curve. Figuring out all the shortcuts, all the, all the aliases, all the commands can take time. Tweaking it to do exactly what you want can will take even more time. But it is very rewarding once you master it. And this is another parallel, another similar thing to Vim. Vim also is, you don't get proficient with Vim in 15 minutes. It takes a lot of time to master it. But once you do, Vim is arguably the most, uh, the best um, editor we have, or the most uh, efficient editor, only after a very steep learning curve. And that's the same thing with the K9S. Oh, um, I forgot. Let's 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 go actually to uh, namespaces and production. One more thing I wanted to show you. I told you that K9S is watching for resources. And I'm going to show you that in action. For example, if I delete this, and how do I delete with D? Uh, no, D is for describe. How uh, you see that's a complication with uh, K9S. Uh, if you don't know the command, uh, it might take a while until you figure it out. I think the deleting is uh, Control D. The reason why I didn't memorize how to delete because I would never delete through a dashboard like this. But let's see. If I delete it with Control D, yes. It asks me to confirm. I'm going to say OK. And you can see how actually it is not showing static output. It is always showing, always showing real time. And you saw how it was one pod was terminating, the other one was starting. Now it started. Let's delete it again. You see how it is showing things in real time all the time, right? It is watching the resources. It is not outputting just what is there at certain moment. Let me go out with con con uh, colon Q. And that's it. That's a very short introduction to K9S. As I said before, if you love, if you like, you don't have to be in love with uh, Vim, you will like this. If you don't like Vim, then you're likely not going to like 
uh, K9S, they're very similar. And the description from my perspective is that K9S is uh, Kubernetes UI based on same principles as BIM. That's it. That was a very short introduction to K9S. 20 minutes or less. I'm trying to never pass 20 minutes mark, at least for the demo, including excluding the intro and the outro. outro. So before you leave, please hit the... Actually, first things first. The gist with all the commands that I executed, on all, all the instructions, is in the comment section. And all the other links to the tools and this and that, all the links are in the comment section. Make sure to check them out. Now, before you leave, please make sure to hit that like button. You want to like this video because it was awesome. And if it wasn't awesome, then do nothing then. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to receive notifications and uh, check out the books and the courses and what's or not, uh, especially the last one, the DevOps catalog. Um, that's the last one and the last one is always the best, right? Uh, if you get one of the books or the courses, you will buy me Red Bull and that means that I will be able to sleep less and do more work after office hours. Anyways, oh, one more thing, one more very important thing. Uh, please check out the DevOps Paradox uh, podcast. That's a podcast in which every week Darin and I are exploring things that are interesting to us or uh, speaking with people that are interesting to us and to others. So check out the podcast. I think you're going to like it. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, cheers.